good morning, everyone. Um, nice to see that so many people want to share this with us about the close in the carbon cycle we air capture. And um, let me just first tell that uh, apart from the American sponsors, which clubs we're talking about, uh, we uh, also uh, have a Danish uh, research council um, support because it is a common uh, thing. And um, let's just go to it. Uh, first of all, as there are many new people here who don't know us from the Technical University Department, um, it's a in Danish context, a big department with 240 employees, and we do all kind of research in sustainable technologies for energy conversion and storage. Um, as the name says, uh, we are located on two campuses uh, near Copenhagen in Denmark, one in uh, Lingby, north of Copenhagen, and the other one, uh, uh, the old Riese National Laboratory, which is a campus now in the DTU in uh, Roskilde, west of Copenhagen. And um, our research spans from very fundamental uh, investigations, such like DFT, density functional theory calculations, to component manufacture. And uh, we focus very much on um, industrial uh, relevant processes. So we are interested in uh, international cooperation and including industry for sure. And uh, our headquarter is uh, shown here on the, the, the picture. Uh, in fact, we, we have our area down here, uh, this part of this nice peninsula in the, in the water you see in the fjord. So, introduction to what it is about today, yeah, the reasons um, for, for having such a conference and for all the work we are doing, all of us is that there's a um, clear reason to look for means of recycling CO2 using renewable energy. Uh, first of all, because of this uh, I think more or less everyone agree nowadays on the uh, anthropogenic uh, um, climate change by CO2. And of course, also in the long run, everybody agrees that uh, there will be a shortage of especially cheap fossil fuel resources. And um, there are a lot of uh, security uh, of supply and uh, problems and uh, geopolitical consequences due to uh, this unequal distribution of resources as we have on this globe, and um, synthetic fuels, CO2 so neutral, green fuels, we call them also nowadays, it seems particular benign uh, to replace the fossil fuels. Uh, just a couple of slides here on the increasing CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. Uh, you see here the last uh, 50 years, uh, so increasing increase, if you can say so. The slope is increasing, so that's of course very worrying. And we are in fact past the uh, 400, at least uh, we pass it every year for the time being, because as you see here, uh, the part per uh, million uh, in CO2 concentration of part of pressure up here, and you see 400 is here, and last March we just passed it first time, and then it goes down again in minimum in October, and then it comes up, and now we are, right now we are in fact uh, 403 or something like that, and that will be 407, 8 next year, and so on, until we do something about it and stop using that much fossil fuel. So it's a very clear thing. Now, the solution is a synthetic green fuels based on hydrogen and carbon, um, so mimicking the fossil fuels to a large extent. Um, we define the green fuel as uh, CO2 neutral hydrocarbons uh, meaning that the amount of emitted uh, CO2 uh, by using the fuel should be less than or equal to the amount of the CO2 used for making the fuel. We can use biomass or captured CO2 plus renewable energy for electrolysis, or at least the CO2 free electricity, e.g. nuclear, can maybe, that's debatable, can maybe taken in also as a, a green fuel. And chemically, they can, you, you can express them as um, uh, C, X, H, Y, O, Z, because a lot of them are oxygenates, which we like to, to, to use, like methanol and DME. So um, this is in general. And, and, and all these stuff can be done, can be made by, from the syngas, when you have the CO and uh, the hydrogen, you can make them uh, by existing catalytic technology. Visions, uh, well, when you have um, 
renewable electricity uh, available and you have many places, uh, then uh, you, you can make the synthesis gas and from this you can make synth uh, synthetic fuel and you can feed it into the, for instance, in Denmark in the natural gas network, but also you can, uh, in principle, produce DME, dimethyl ether, gasoline and even diesel and that would be should be produced in places like Iceland, Canada, all these desolate places where you have especially much um, renewable energy. And um, I think uh, as the first target, uh, really, replacement of natural gas and liquid fuel for transportation, I think the liquid fuel for transportation, that's where you easy, most easily make a, 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 a market for your stuff right now because um, oil is um, expensive. And, uh, of course, it's a big advantage compared to, for instance, hydrogen technology that all the infrastructure for uh, such hydrocarbon transportation and so on, that's, um, that's available, that exists. And um, when you look at then at the cycle, we can say, uh, because, because we, we, we want to close the cycle and uh, we have uh, more or less one uh, vision for that, namely that you have, uh, we will start down here with the uh, Hmm? Hmm? I don't know. There, there we go. Uh, we're an electrolysis cell. Um, we'll, you'll hear more about what such kind of stuff is uh, later on today. Uh, but, but there you do the CO2 and uh, steam uh, electrolysis, for instance, or water electrolysis at least, and you get synthesis gas out of it, and then you can do the fuel synthesis by uh, known technology, and you can put that into the car, and you produce your CO2. But then you have to, of course, to collect it again, or you have done it on beforehand because it's a cycle, and you can, of course, uh, do it using biomass. Uh, that's concentrated a lot, and if you then burn the biomass, you'll have concentrated CO2 here. So that's one way, and maybe an easy and quick way to do the CO2 concentration. But in the longer run, because there's not enough biomass. We know that a lot of I think everybody who really study these things agree that there's not enough biomass. So then we need the, the air capture, uh, the type which Klaus is studying here, where you take up uh, with suitable um, chemical means the CO2 from, um, uh, from, from, from the air and, and then go into the same cycle again. So that's the long-term uh, solution and uh, the most interesting for scientists especially, in my opinion. There are many methods uh, you can use for, for also air capture. There are several systems under um, development uh, in the world. And uh, apart from uh, this, you, yeah, you have the biomass also, which can be done in various uh, ways and various kinds of biomass. Uh, and of course we have, I just mentioned here, that's a competitor. You can say chemical looping of oxygen for coal combustion, which is really coming up. And that's not for air capture, that's for CCS. So that's just mentioning here. Yeah, I'm not going into it and we'll not hear about it today, but we will hear about it the next couple of days as far as I can see the, um, the, the agenda. Um, because in that case, you get kind of pure CO2 coming out from, from, from your power plant. And um, that's, of course, a cheaper way to do carbon sequestration. Um, maybe we can utilize some of it, at least temporarily, also in, in, uh, in our work and in, in the kind of technology we want to promote. When we have the CO2, then there's the electrolysis. We need some kind of electrolysis, I think. Uh, we can do that several ways, also co-electrolysis at high temperature of CO2 and uh, steam. Um, also, you can do chemical looping of CO2 into CO, and in fact, you can use plasmolysis and so on. There are many different ways of splitting CO2 when you come into it. Um, so either reaction or plasma. Um, but uh, there again, you have to separate the oxygen out if you use uh, plasma. And then, of course, in the very long term, you can use artificial photosynthesis of fuel, uh, especially photochemical conversion of CO2. Sounds very attractive. But um, so far, the technology, well, it's not really a technology, it's basic research mainly so far. So in conclusion, um, we have cycles that can provide green synthetic hydrocarbon fuel. So if we would be willing to pay enough, we could do it already today. We wish to make uh, the technologies affordable. And uh, various uh, calculations uh, have been done and published, and among them is also a, a Danish um, 
Engineering uh, Society um, uh, with John Buckel, who will talk later today, was in there. And I think uh, there's some uh, agreement, at least, that you are down in this kind of, say, few percentage of the GNP. So it, it can be done. It can be, but it will not destroy our societies. So with this, I think we can do it, and let's do it, because that's what we need to do. And today and the days after, we will hear about how we can do it. So with this, thank you for your attention. <laughs>